When someone mentions the words fairy tales, what comes to your mind? Perhaps it's an image of a big bad wolf attempting to blow down a brick house filled with three terrified pigs. Maybe you picture a young woman at a glamorous ball clamoring into a horse-drawn carriage while missing a glass shoe. Or maybe it's possible that you think back to the harrowing story of how Hansel and Gretel outsmarted a cannibalistic witch. No matter which old tale you think of, there's a very good chance that it was created to either teach a lesson or just simply serve as a source of entertainment. Evidently, these could never serve as an actual account of something that happened. I mean, after all, they were, and are called fairy tales, right? Obviously, pigs can't build houses, pumpkins can't be turned into carriages, and no rational human being could ever eat that much candy. So yes, the stories mentioned earlier are quite made up. The same, however, might not be able to be said about the tale of the Pied Piper of Hamelin. Oddly enough, it appears that this bizarre story about a man with a magical flute who took all of the town's children away might actually have some merit to it. And how do we know this, you ask? Well, that's easy. The town documented the entire event. Good evening, Austin. Hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> what do you know about the Pied Piper of Hamelin? What do I know about the Pied Piper of Hamelin? Mm. Uh, I know that it's a man who had a flute and he made a bunch of rats disappear. And then some people screwed him over and apparently... Kind of reminds you of uh, St. Paddy's, right? St. Patrick took Saint all Patrick. took all the, the snakes, snakes out of Ireland. Yeah, but he didn't kidnap children last I checked. <laughs> oh, we don't know that. I mean, maybe there's like a... Maybe there's a darker side a dark of that story. Of it. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I know that this is one of those fairy tales that actually might have some truth to it. And mm -hmm. I actually think there is a little bit of truth to it, which oh, yeah. you might be surprised because is usually it the rat part or the children part. Uh, well, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to it. I'm not going to spoil anything. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I might uh, I might be the believer in this story. Oh, maybe. I got it. Well, you'll have, you have to we'll see. We'll see. Wait, you'll have to tune in to the end. end of this podcast to see. So for those of you who don't know, welcome back to the You Go First podcast. Um, this is Fernando, and my name's Austin. We will this be your host today. Fernando's pointing downwards for some reason. <laughs> because on my screen, you're down. You're below Oh, me. okay. Well, for audio-only listeners, Fernando's pointing downwards. So just, yeah. Just so you know. On the top screen. On the top screen. Oh, mine's sideways. Anyways, so yeah, um, today we're going to talk about the Pied Piper of Hamlin and the dark connotations that are associated with it and the potential truth about what the story is based off of. So what happened to these children? For those of you who don't know the story of the Pied Piper of Hamlin, it goes a little something like this. The town of Hamlin begins to experience a rat infestation of the highest caliber. Rats have invaded the streets, the local shops, and even people's homes. Worse yet, it appears that the citizens of Hamlin have no solution to the problem at hand. Food My traps. sister used to have a rat a rat problem, and it's no joke, man. Like loot. Well, listen, glue traps are horrible. I don't like them. Inhumane. If you if I you have a like rat them. problem, do not use glue traps because that is the slowest death, like in the most miserable thing they could experience. We had to use uh, just the regular ones. You know, I wish we used catch and release, but we didn't. But uh, they they can breed pretty quickly. Oh they, yeah. Um, infestation is real you can you can get a serious problem if you don't catch it soon enough yeah we uh our first house we had an issue with mice and i will admit i didn't think it through and i used a glue trap and i almost cried because how horrible <laughs> well you should it was so horrible i did not That's, like it i was like i'm awful. never using these things again this is Austin's horrible mom how could you let him do <laughs> <laughs> you can reference her in every single one i love your mom your mom's a sweetheart <laughs> well <clears throat> she's just being nice to you Oh, that's, that's someone asked. That's guess. what good good moms do. <laughs> yeah. All right, I guess. Uh, yeah. So, okay, I guess at this time they didn't have a uh, mouse trap. So I guess your mouse Probably trap not. was a uh, a cat. A cat, yeah. Which I got one, but I don't know if she's qualified for the job. Some rats. Mouse hunting. Some rats are pretty damn big. I mean, those ones we saw in the subway. Oh, I've, I've been in New York City. Yeah, dude. That's uh, that's they're no joke, dude. I think I remember one time. Uh. 
I thought it was a cockroach coming down the street, but as it got closer, I think it was a it was a rat. And I like <laughs> it was big, dude. It was like the size of my shoe. I was like, I freaked out. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I think I'd have freaked out more if it was a cockroach that was that big. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was a cockroach and I thought it was a rat. Either way, I was freaked out. Something big came at my foot in like the streets of DC. <laughs> Anyways, let's get back to the Pied Piper. As the infestation intensifies, rats that are supposedly as big as dogs, well, okay, come on. <laughs> yeah, I know, come on. It's begin just... to actually attack and hurt the townspeople. Some rats supposedly even snatch babies from their mothers and take them. Where did you get <laughs> <laughs> Just telling the story, man. Again. Just telling the story. <laughs> Either way, the situation is looking quite dire, right? Rats taking over the town. Recognizing that the situation has gotten way out of hand, the villagers, the village residents approach the mayor seeking a solution. And his idea is to offer a handsome reward to anybody who can rid the town of these filthy vermin. Cue the Pied Piper. And you know what? What problem can't be solved by just throwing money at it, right? Just throw money at it. I mean, that's what every Unless politician you're poor. does. Oh, well, yeah. But this is the mayor. Unless you're poor, then you suffer. Too and bad. the mayor back then, I feel, would be more like probably like a lord. So he's going to have a lot of money. My lord. My lord. My lord, the rats have taken over the kitchen. <laughs> Sorry. Dude. It's okay. I'm overtired, too. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sober as can be, but I'm, I'm exhausted. <clears throat> Miraculously, that same day, a Pied Piper, and Pied meaning that he's wearing clothes that are multicolored. If you look at any depictions of him, you'll see that it's it's quite like a uh, whimsical and just very colorful, colorful it's clothes. Very jester-like. Mm, yeah. Uh, he happens to be strolling through the town. He hears about the situation that has been plaguing the townspeople and the reward for removing the rats. He comes to the mayor and tells him that he can make all the rats disappear and make, make the town's problems disappear as well. Skeptical but intrigued, the mayor decides to let the piper carry out the task. He tells him that as soon as the job is complete, he will receive his reward. Well, it should be probably stated in here that the reward is like, it's like, uh, it's disputed. I think, but I think at some point it's like 50,000 gold coins or something like that. Like, it's, it's, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, especially for that time. Um, it would have made him very He would have been well a wealthy, very wealthy man. Yeah. And uh, regardless, that's what he's promised. And then he decides that he's going to get to work. And almost immediately he begins to play his flute. And none of the townspeople hear the produced tune. But despite this, apparently all the rats can hear this and they perk up their little heads. And they begin to flock in droves towards the piper. I can't do it. That one had rabies, I guess. I guess, yeah. Yes. I mean, I'm sure one of them did. As soon as the town, all as soon as all of the town's rats have presented themselves, the piper begins to play his tune and slowly leads them out of town in tow. Can you play what? a tune for me? Hold on. Maybe you can pick up my Discord thing. I can't hear anything. You just look like a moron. Oh man, I really hope it's picking up my. I have a little. Uh, I have a little marching music attached to my. Uh, my, my little stream deck, dude. But uh, I, don't, I for, hope I hope it picked it up. For all the audio only listeners, if nothing came up, Fernando is just bouncing around in front of the camera, do, do, pretending do, to play a flute. Do, do. Um, do, yeah. do, 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 do. That's what it goes. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> what happens next largely depends upon the iteration of the story you're reading. And as far as I know, there are three different scenarios, but we'll get into a, some, some of them here. But for those who like happy endings, Disney did a version <laughs> where the rats are led. <clears throat> I think this is like from the 70s too, but it's a cartoon version and the Pied Piper leads them to a giant block of cheese and they carry out the remainder of their days getting fat. And that's then the a great way to go. The know, magical that's... block of cheese also disappears. <laughs> <laughs> it just poof gone into the ether. It's over. No more rats. They're living in rat, rat heaven. In rat heaven. <laughs> Another ending actually includes the rats being brought to a cave into the mountains, never to be seen again. And then there's the bad ending where the rats are led to the river to drown. Even though rats are apparently prominent swimmers. Did you know that? I did know that rats can swim. However, yeah, I, didn't I didn't learn that from Ratatouille. It's like, it's actually true. <laughs> so there's another, I don't really like this way, but there's another type of mouse trap. It's very popular in uh, barns and stuff. You take a big, like, get, you know, like 10 gallon or five gallon bucket and you put a stick through it. 
but you have it so it can like spin. Mm-hmm. You put peanut butter in the middle of it and they get up and they go to get the peanut butter. The stick turns, but you filled the bucket with water and they go in there and yes, they can wait around and swim and it's great, but eventually they get tired and then they How just do you know so drown. much about rat torture because when you live out in the farm country stuff, but you don't have a barn. No, but I lived out in Champlain, which is I was surrounded by farms. Plus, I work in Vermont. Everybody, every other person's like a freaking farmer there. No, they're not. Don't don't generalize. Dead serious. Like, don't generalize like, our like Vermont three listeners. Farmers that work where okay, I work. But just because you know three farmers doesn't mean every Vermonters are farmers. You're generalizing. <laughs> I'm just saying I've never met a farmer until I moved to Vermont. Either way, the Pied Piper completes his mission, returns back to the mayor's house to collect his reward. Unfortunately for him, the town has decided that they no longer wish to give him his money. They renege on the deal. And again, depending on the story you hear, it's either because the townspeople make excuses or they actually believe that he originally brought the rats into the town in the first place. What a hustle if you think dude, about that. Dude, that would have been a great hustle. <laughs> like, if you could, like, control rats like that, dude, and be like, hey, I could take care of that rat problem for you. <laughs> He's just been doing this going town to town, having each It'll town cost you, though. by round. Hey, by dude, that's, that's a heck of a deal, especially if there's no way to, like, there's no communications back then, right? Everything's by, like, pigeon messenger or something, so it's like... How are they going to know that you're doing this? Yeah, there's no video. You know, maybe Quite Pied lucrative. Piper's ultimate revenge was not just taking the children, but he started the bubonic plague single-handed. <laughs> he just oh, rats we'll, everywhere. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. I don't know, like, had the plague started at this time? This is no. like the year 12. We'll, 12 get, we'll get to it, but yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it, that's actually quite a core piece of this. Th- that is. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that. <clears throat> Realizing that he definitely was not getting paid that day, the Piper tells everyone that he will return in exactly one year, and if he is not paid upon arrival, he says he will take what he was rightfully earned, and then proceeds to leave. Very ominous. Very ominous. If I was someone, and someone made a threat, like, I'll be back in one year, I'm like, what is he going to take? <laughs> what can he take? I, I mean, I have to admit, now granted, I get it, you just described him earlier as a man in color for clothing, and he has a flute, and... That alone, I guess, wouldn't be very intimidating. I mean, I'm scared but, that this guy can control rats. But that's the thing. <laughs> like, if I just witness this man, well, even if he put the rats there, okay? Say so he did put the rats there. This, like, this man has trained thousands of rats. Yeah, like, what if he decides, I'm coming back, and I'm coming back with those rats, and I'm going to make sure they try to kill you this time? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, don't, I know it's a little different, but they, you know, scientists claim that, like, there's enough spiders on the in, on Earth to eat, like... The whole human race. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's something oh. I keep seeing being claimed. Sounds like I'm some hell sure shit, dude. Thousands of rats could take out like a small medieval town of a thousand people. Oh, most definitely. And they have. <laughs> they have before. Well, well, so. Yeah, you look. You look back to the Middle Ages. There's definitely a. There's definitely like a spike in or a decrease in the human population. Yeah, and uh, it has uh, to do with a rats. Big blip, <laughs> if you will. Thanos snapped by rats. <laughs> Yeah, dude, fucking Remy from Ratatouille just was <laughs> with the chef hat. I wish I took a picture, but at the festival I went to, this guy was wearing this denim jacket, and like on his shirt was a little plushie of Remy with a little chef's hat. I love it. That's great. And it's just like, oh my god, dude, that's the cutest thing ever. That's awesome. <clears throat> Fast forward to set Sunday, June twenty sixth, twelve eighty four. This date's very important. So keep that. Keep that in your little noggin. The Piper returns to the town, and at this time, all of the adults are in church, and all the children are outside playing. Why they're not in church with the adults, I don't know. The Piper then proceeds to play a tune, again, one that adults can't hear. It's like a dog whistle, right? And all 130 children begin to follow him outside of the town and into the mountains. By the time the parents come out of church, all of the children are gone, and the only reason they are able to figure out what has happened is because one child, or depending on the story, I've heard there's there's one story where there's three children, right? One lame, one deaf, and one uh, one blind. And uh, together, in this with version, the power of <laughs> the senses, they get to explain <laughs> what happened. <laughs> because one child is accidentally left behind and proceeds to tell everyone what they witness. Despe- desperate to find the children, a search party scours the mountains but is unable to find them. And sadly, the children are never seen again. Okay, so to recap, he did his thing. They didn't give him the money. He came back a year later. He took all the kids. The ones that were left behind told the parents of what happened. They look all Is that my daughter? And <laughs> Is that my daughter in there? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, uh, yeah, they're, they're gone. That's it. Literally, that's the story. And I guess there is technically, a, depending on what part you listen to or what story you're reading, 
there's an ending where they do find the Piper, but he taunts them and basically says, you'll never see your children again. But that's literally the only difference. No matter which version it is, the kids don't come back. That's that's it. They're gone. I mean, but for anyone that didn't want their child, right? <laughs> I mean, I they guess. Must be, but I, they must be like, damn, this I is feel, a great opportunity. <laughs> I feel back then, you kind of had a much bigger reliance on your children, like for work. Yeah, because you're know, like, oh, child well, labor I, laws weren't a thing back then. Yeah, no, they weren't. In fact, if anything, your kid probably got arrested for not working. So, yeah, okay. So it's pretty devastating. You got to think too, like kind of the joke we made earlier about how a, a, you know rats would take out a town of a thousand. Let's pretend this town did have a thousand. Which that back then, like a township having a thousand people, probably was a decent amount. And 130 people. Oh, just, a town of a thousand is in these times is probably like actually a pretty big town, honestly. Right. So 130 children just disappearing. That's like <laughs> that's a good chunk of your population just oh, dude, going all the, away. All the shoe shiners have just left town. <laughs> No butter How am I going to shine churned. my shoes, dude? No shoe shiners, no butter churners. Dude, who's hanging up the laundry? <laughs> oh, God. All Where right. are the stable boys? <laughs> Some say they're wrangling all the rats. I'm not picking up this horse shit. <laughs> so, anyways, one thing that makes a fairy tale a fairy tale is that no matter how many iterations there there's are of it, it. Yes, there's fairies in it. No. Uh... No matter how many iterations there are of it, and there are typically many, there are core elements that must be included within every version of it. In the case of the Pied Piper of Hamlin, these components include the Piper taking exactly 130 children from the town of Hamlin, which includes the mayor's daughter. That's in every single one. I know I didn't mention that, but it felt redundant if I mentioned it twice. So, yes, the mayor's daughter disappears every single time, along with included... In that hundred and thirty mayor. <laughs> Not the mayor. Anyone but the mayor. <laughs> and the event, like I said, always happened in Hamlin, Germany. And as you mentioned, the date that it occurred is the twenty sixth of June, twelve eighty four. And to me, that is an exceedingly weird tidbit of information in a fairy tale. I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, I don't read fairy tales, but I don't think many fairy tales talk about a specific date in a specific year. Right? I mean, can you think of any? No, and that's that's what makes this story all the more believable that something did happen. <clears throat> something something ominous, I think, did happen in the town of Hamlin because I don't think any... I mean, when you think about it, I don't think any other fairy tale is, like, town-specific or year-specific. No, they'll be, like, in, you in know, this case, maybe country-specific. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Um, I mean, honestly, if Aren't a lot of fairy tales that take place in Germany because of uh, the Brothers Grimm. Yes, thank you. Yeah, because I think they basically rewrote a majority of fairy tales to be like kind of German specific. So it plagiarized everything. Yeah. The uh, one thing, though, that if you notice that I didn't include was the rats and the rats mm. actually are not in every single story. Um, they were in addition after, well, after the, the bubonic plague and that's quite another that's another important factor later on in fact uh as a little like hint or oh give me a little give me a little taste it might actually be another story in here that people somehow mix together so tale of the pied piper as most of us know it might actually be two stories oh what's the other story we'll get to that i want to know you'll know later no i want to know now you will know later no i want to know now shut up (laughs) Uh, anyway, <laughs> one of the main one of the main reasons for many of the creative licenses that people have taken with this story, and many others for that matter, is the fact that during the time these stories were created, they were typically spoken by bards. Bards were quite integral within early European society, as much of the population could not read. Like any game of telephone, information would become scrambled from time to time. This is important to understand. Oh, I loved Telephone. <laughs> it was such a great game, but you're right. No, no, no one's good the, at it. The Everybody's original, bad at the it. The original answer never gets to you, dude. It, 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 everyone's pretty bad at it. Because there's always that one guy that, or that one person that wants to go rogue. It's like, you know what? I'm changing this. <laughs> and you know what? In bastard. all honesty, I'm probably that guy. I'm probably the person that goes rogue every time. Just want to ruin everything. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pot stirrer, dude. I just want to... <laughs> I want to make things difficult. <laughs> so the fact that this gets scrambled from time to time is important to understand because despite <clears throat> all of this, 
Those previously mentioned main components are available in every telling of the story. So no matter how horrible the retelling of the story was, these components are always in it because they are core components. You know, they're like uh, they're like elements. You can't break them down. True. You know. So coincidentally enough, those specific mm-hmm. tidbits of information actually appear in the town of Hamlin's records. Get into those little tidbits, shall we? You said tidbits <clears throat> a lot already. I have said. You know, I'm gonna say it again because I hadn't. You you used up all yours. Now it's time for me to use them. Okay. <laughs> now I have my allowance. Okay. The first bit of evidence that pointed to, the points Tidbit. historian. God damn it! You used mine. <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> you can't use mine. <laughs> First piece of evidence that pointed historians to the notion that the Pied Piper story may not have been completely fiction was that of the Lundberg manuscript. Heinrich Spanuth discovered the earliest version of the story in the Lundberg City archives in 1936. This document was written by a monk and depicted the region's history. And within this document, there was an entry that described an event that involved 130 children going missing in 1284. Remember that date we mentioned earlier? Both pieces of information align quite nicely with the details in the story a bit too nicely. Believing that there was no way this could be a coincidence, historians began to scour the town of Hamlin's for clues. During their search, they found the following. An inscription in the town hall dated back to 1500 AD, which is only 216 years after 1284. Uh, The inscription read, in the year of 1284, after the birth of Christ, from Hamlin were led 130 children born at this place, led away by a piper into the mountain. So that's very specific. <clears throat> that's oddly honest. specific, that's especially very, very for specific. something like 200 years is not really that long in the, in the case of like documentation, right? Especially in, in those times, like clearly something might have happened in 1284. Well, yeah. Now, was it, it a magical man in a, with a magical flute <clears throat> in a, a very whimsical costume? I don't know. The second clue was that a stained glass window that was found in a church that was supposedly constructed around the same time that depicts the piper playing a flute with children in the background. Again, oddly specific. (laughs) Oddly specific, dude. Always the pipe. One thing I will say, I want to chime in with this, a lot of historians, and I don't... I've seen an allegory for the piper being like kind of like death, you know, which could be the plague. Yeah, which would make sense. Some historians are basically said, hey, anything after 1500 AD, don't believe. And And the reason why is... I guess the reason they gave was it just all kind of it's when the rats started getting involved, I guess. Like that might be the big thing. So, so after like, well, 1200, after 1500, after 1500, which ironically is where that inscription is. But again, that inscription is so specific. Well, maybe and them at 1501 and not 1500. Maybe. Yes, that was the cutoff. <laughs> 1500. OK, 1501. No, no. <laughs> <clears throat> Another one is that in the actual town records, there's an entry for 1384 that reads, it has been 100 years since the day our children left. So what happened, Austin? What do I think happened? I mean, 1384 is in 1500, so I mean, I think you can prove that one. Yeah, so I would say that one's, you know, the fact that it's actually been 100 years too, because the thing is, like, yes, obviously there were people... Usually, I, I believe they were part of, like, you know, the government who could write and stuff like that. Like, if you had a special education or if you were of the wealthy class, you could write. So the, the fact is, if something is going to get written down and recorded, it's going to be something big, you know, because there's probably not tons of people who can write. You know, it's not like today where an event happens and everybody can write about it and text about it and make YouTube videos about it and stuff. So I mean, they might have had YouTube back then. Yeah, you think? Yeah. The aliens gifted them mm-hmm. YouTube. Someone. Okay. Then it got the government Maybe kept the a secret from us for years. Maybe, <laughs> Maybe the piper was the, piper. the alien with gave us YouTube. Oh my god. I I'll have a that. new I have a new theory. <laughs> <laughs> I have a yeah. new theory that I didn't think about until just this very moment. <laughs> <laughs> so something happened. I, I am a firm believer It was aliens. You can document this. I believe put it on the book. This it story was has some merit to it. This might be one of the few that I actually it say has that something to. that you don't. Until we get the aliens, though, I believe in all that stuff. But, but anyways, let's get into some of the theories, and along the way, we can actually, you know, I don't, again, I don't want to give it up. I don't want to. I'm kidding, Austin's anything. mom. He has merit. I'm sorry. He's a good kid. <laughs> oh, thanks. Sometimes. So, so what happened? We're all wondering, right? So by actually, now, nah, not may... anymore. <laughs> not really. 
No, I okay. don't care. We can stop. All right. I'm sorry. Now I'm done being a smart ass. So by now you may be thinking that there's no way this could all be a coincidence, right? So does this mean that the Pied Piper story is true and 130 children were actually whisked away by a man in colorful clothing with a flute? Probably not. As with any mysterious event, there are a few theories that have been proposed and not one of them involves a magical flute. Bummer. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> Bummer, dude. Uh, but that doesn't mean, you know, okay, so there's no I magical flute. I play a flute. gnarly flute, though. I, I mean, I guess all the depends rats on, are raving depends. off into the mountains. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know that scene... Man, we're referencing Ratatouille a lot. <laughs> you know, at first it was Shrek, and then it was, uh, I think it was Shrek, Shrek, and now, you know, now we're on Ratatouille, dude. I think it's like the third Ratatouille reference, maybe the fourth. <laughs> it's the scene I'm thinking of where they're like... In the river. Uh, no, no, no. Before the river, when Remy, when they haven't gotten shot at by a shotgun yet, yeah. and they're up in the attic, and... Oh, no, no, sorry. It's after that. It's when Remy runs into his family after they... You know, get separated. Like on the streets of Paris or what? But yeah, they have like some little hideaway and like all yeah. the, rat, you know, his father's like, my son has returned. And then there's like rats playing musical instruments <laughs> and stuff like that. That's like what I picture. Only there's like lights like in the background just like going everywhere. It's like a rave with, it's like, a, rave with a bunch of rats. <laughs> but, but it's like renditions of medieval music. <laughs> mm-hmm. You'll have to play some medieval music when you edit this. Oh, definitely. Don't worry. That'll, that'll be the. That'll be the. In, um, yeah. Some piping music, dude. That'll be in the intro when you're talking. Hell yeah, dude. All right. So theory one: the Black Death was the piper. Mm-hmm. The first theory claims that the children were simply taken away by the bubonic plague. This would explain the rats within some iterations of the story as they carried the disease, and it would also explain the piper. Allow me to explain. During this time in European history, pipers were not exactly looked kindly upon. They were considered a drain on society. And did very little to better it. Because of these beliefs, Piper's No one wants affiliated. to invest in the arts. <laughs> Nobody. It's the, nothing's changed. It's the same exact way. They want manual labor. What can you do for me? You can't. How can I exploit you? You play a flute? Nope. It, unless you push through that ceiling and then you become a famous artist. Then people want to talk to you. It's about it, though. Until then, though, you're probably just shit on <laughs> all the time. Anyways... So, because of these beliefs, pipers became affiliated with bad omens. Essentially, in this theory, the piper is simply a metaphor for something bad. In this case, a horrendous disease, a.k.a. death, as you had mentioned. This, unfortunately, doesn't explain the date. The plague happened 70 years after this supposed date occurred. Nor does it explain the fact that only children were affected. I mean, as you know, the Black Death killed everybody. It didn't just kill children. It didn't just kill adults. It killed everybody. Mm -hmm. So why would there just be a focus on 130 kids? I mean, I guess, and this is not a thing, it's just me thinking about it. Maybe there was a, maybe there was just a crusade and there were lots of children who lost family and they were all stuck inside an orphanage and they all got the bubonic plague and they all died. I don't think that's what happened, but I could see that. It's possible. It could be an allegory for the Black Plague, you know. So it could be it. I mean... Do I think that's what it was? No, I do not, personally. Yeah, you think it's the magical flute. Well, yes, I mean, obviously. Obviously. What else could it be? <laughs> All <Nothing>. right. So <laughs> aliens. <laughs> aliens. Aliens did it. The Piper's an alien. He took them to the Andromeda star system. I don't know if that's a freaking thing. <laughs> and the whole... They control... They have slaves, and they control them by using flute music. I don't know. There you go. There's a bonus theory for you. Uh, theory two, the children were involuntarily drafted into the Children's Crusade of 1212. This is absolutely insane to me. I did not know that this was a thing. So I feel most people all know about know of the Crusades. Um, the however, Holy Crusades, baby, to take he, back the Holy Land. Yeah, well, they tried. Um, <clears throat> still trying. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. Uh, so this particular crusade was led by Nicholas Cologne and Stephen. I think it's of- Colon. I think it's Cologne. I think it's Colon. I'm going to... S- We're going to go Colon on this one. You want to go Colon? Final answer. I know it's Cologne, but just for the sake of it, I'll say Colin. Led by Nicholas... No, not Colin. I want Colon. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Led by Nicholas Cologne and Stephen <laughs> of Cloyes, the Children's Crusade was an attempt to build a kingdom of Jerusalem within the Holy Land. The reason it was called the Children's Crusade was because the vast majority of their 30,000-strong forces were predominantly children. 
Yeah, man, the the holy wars were. Oh, man, humanity is despicable, man. Making kids man. fight your war, dude. Like, jeez, Louise, bro. Oh, that shoe shiner there. He looks like he could wield a sword. <laughs> I don't want to lose. I don't want to be named in war. You go, boy. <laughs> exactly. I'll give you a silver coin when you come back. Gee, Mister, a whole silver coin. <laughs> Uh, it has been proposed that the children of Hamlin may have been uh, forced into the military and were required to leave town. Um, as you can probably imagine, this war didn't go very well, and it has been reported that many of those individuals were slaughtered during the various battles. As convenient as this theory would be, however, this probably isn't what happened in Hamlin, and that is because the story of the Pied Piper occurred in 1284, and these crusades happened in 1212. And historians mm-hmm. on both ends, whether they're talking about this story, the Pied Piper, or the story or the history of the Children's Crusade, they are very defiant on those dates. So there's no way that these dates are wrong. So, so yeah, uh, that is a popular theory, but I, again, I don't think that was it either. Yeah, the time the, the timelines don't match up, unfortunately. And, Even though it's like it's it's plausible, especially it sounds plausible, but it's just the dates don't match up, so it makes it kind of hard to believe. It is, and also you would think because which I guess is impossible. Sorry, the, <laughs> the Crusades were a, a big event during this time, and you would think that someone who's writing the story or like documenting it would be instead of saying a piper came and took 130 children. I feel it would be more positive. It would be like 130 children left today to, you know, serve God or something. I don't know something like that. You know, not. It, I don't think it'd be seen as a negative connotation. At that yeah. time. But I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't know really how Germany felt during these crusades. I actually don't know much about the crusades other than the very basic stuff. So There's a there's a crusade. I think I talked to you about this. I want to watch that one crusade movie called The uh, Kingdom of Heaven. I heard it's of a, it, but I, I never it's a, watched it. It's or... like supposedly historical. Well, at least got historical figures in it. Yeah. But okay. uh, it's, it's a really interesting time in history, for sure. So theory three is... Mass emigration from the town of Hamlin. Mm -hmm. During this point in history, Eastern Germany was facing a major economic downturn. Um, Some of the research I was looking at, I I did look all over the place. So if you know, if someone figures this out, please let me know. But it had to do with the river. But I don't know if it had to do with the river dwindling in terms of like the amount of water in it or the amount of fish that were in it. Although I think it was more of like for transportation but no one really seemed to be able to narrow down exactly what was going on with the river there just was an issue with the river was it was it chemtrails maybe it was chemtrails yes <laughs> <laughs> so as a result of this fiscal depression many people saw opportunity in neighboring areas because of this hamlin may have lost a large portion of its community who were just simply trying to escape a depression because you got to think too back then not you know <laughs> Having like an area facing an economic issue, you actually could move away and go somewhere else, and it wouldn't be affected because it wasn't so interconnected. You know, today, if the economy is doing kind of crappy in one country, it's probably not doing great in many others. Unless it's USA, baby! <laughs> USA! 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 <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Fernando's the biggest patriot you'll ever meet. What this theory postulates is that the word children in this context actually means oh. people from Hamlin. For people, or for people. For example, during this time period, it was common to refer to somebody who moved away from a town as a child of blank. So if you're from New York City, you're a child of New York City. If you're from Boston, you're a child of Boston. And where are you from? Like originally? Yeah. Uh, Laredo, Texas. If you're from Laredo, Texas, you're a child of Laredo, Texas. There you go. Such a large decrease in population would have had dire consequences for a town of this size and would definitely be seen as a major negative event. Oddly enough, this is probably the most grounded explanation of all, but it's actually the only theory that could include an actual piper. In addition to being hated almost universally, pipers also held the occupation Dude, uh, you're a poor dog, dude. Like, why do people? So many people hate your dog. I don't get. It. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second. Yeah, I don't know. Piper just needs to chill the fuck out. Dude. She needs get to a stop job. Ripping those townspeople off. Yeah, get a job. 
Piper, what did you do with those children? <laughs> <laughs> oh, for anyone not in the loop, his dog's name is Piper. It just it, it came to me just barely. I'm so sorry. God, uh, you're so, I'm so sidetracked. This is what happens when I'm tired. Dude. I'm sorry. I'm exhausted, but it's okay. Oddly enough, this is probably the most grounded explanation of all, but it's actually the only theory that might actually include an Piper. Um, in addition to being hated almost universally, <clears throat> Pipers would also occasionally be asked to complete odd jobs. It is possible that a Piper was hired by a hitman, I mean, sorry, a wealthy lord, to recruit people <laughs> from neighboring areas to come and live in a newly formed township. Newly formed township. It was was Assassin in there? <laughs> no, I just, it felt right. It felt right? Oh, my God. <laughs> No, he was not. He was not hired by. Uh, he was not hired by a hitman. He's not hired to be a hitman that we know of. I'm just being a smartass. Maybe he was hired. I don't know. Who knows? So say it yes, like a man. The, the piper may have been recruited to recruit people to move into this new town. That's basically it. I've actually well, heard that theory. Basically, like a, a a new feudal lord is getting this uptown start, like in this new town that's. No one lives, right? So why not just steal some people? Right, exactly. I feel it's a battle for people, too. Yeah, like, uh, especially because if there's lords, right? Like, obviously, you want to be have a stronger, more booming economy and, like, more people because what if you need what if you need to, like, use said people in a, in a battle against another lord, you know? Every lord needs subjects. And the more you have, the more powerful what, you are. That's what Lord Fardquad told me, dude. That's what he taught me. <laughs> <laughs> some of you may die <laughs> but that's a but. sacrifice i'm willing to take <laughs> i think it's make whatever take make dude okay all right shrek <laughs> shrek rider oh my god he came back <laughs> god dude all right ratatouille and shrek jesus christ after like you know 10 episodes we might go to have our own bingo card probably dude so what adds further credence to this notion is that throughout the neighboring country of transylvania there are shout out to uh, Dracula. Yeah, there are multiple shout town out Count records. Chocula. <laughs> <laughs> there are multiple town records with new arrivals having come from the town of Hamelin. <clears throat> In fact, within these documents, people have the surname Hamelin and are even referred to as children of Hamelin. As you have priority guessed, most researchers and historians believe that this is the most viable theory, mm. and that is where I lump all of my uh, beliefs into there too. That they moved to a different town. Yeah. So I you know that makes it. sense because like a lot of last names originate right like because there are people with the last name like Hamlin or whatever like in names come from kind of like where it used to be this way right where in the olden days it's like your last name was basically where you were from kind of thing especially if you were a commoner or a peasant that didn't have like a family tree right. to like date back what your surname was where you're from or your occupation <clears throat> sometimes yeah. yeah. That's why we so, had a lot of Smiths or whatever, because they were blacksmiths or whatever. That's why my last name is what it is. We built lots of those. You did not. You did not. You were just, <laughs> you were filthy beaver trappers from fucking Quebec. Dude. You're just jealous because you couldn't catch a pelt. <laughs> I couldn't catch as much beaver as you. I'm sorry. Dude. It's okay, son. You'll get better at with age. Oh, God. <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, so here's some bonus theories. And the first one kind of sucks. But the other theory, and for the record, neither of these are very viable. There isn't much proof. But people threw them out there, so we'll throw them out there, too. Uh, some people liken the Predator. The predator. <laughs> Bro, some <stop>. people <laughs> liken the Piper to a Predator. Kidnapped yeah, he could have been a, I mean, honestly, yeah. I'm sure pedophile isn't a thing that I mean, they came exi- up in the... Yeah, they sure existed, existed before. Back then. Yeah. So, the f- I have to admit, it's absolutely terrifying that someone was kidnapping like 130 children. Uh, these townspeople, like... I feel back... I mean, it's bad enough today, but back then I feel if you ever... If somebody ever found that out, you'd probably be... You know, it'd be over for you pretty quick. Although I have to admit, back then... Would it though? People were getting married at like. That's what I'm saying. Would it know, though? Really gross would ages. It, would it though? Because like I think 
like age of consent wasn't a thing until like the 19th century or something. <laughs> I think it was as long as your parents were willing to marry you off. And that's kind of which is disgusting. But that's yeah. 1830 yeah. is when the age of consent was raised to 18 and 16 Ooh. for females. That's... I don't think I don't think they were practicing consent in the 1200s. No, pro- pro- probably not. Like I said, there's just a, a theory someone threw out. Um, so no matter how disgusting it, it's quite plausible. Unfortunately. So another theory that's thrown out there again, um, which is actually I, I want to cover this, is there may have been a social contagion like the dancing plague. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not going to get into it. Those will be for another episode. <clears throat> but just as a quick recap, the dancing plague was literally it was in France, right? Uh, Strasbourg, which is what is now France. Yes. OK, so back in the olden days uh france had a the dancing plague of 1518 yeah so actually so yeah again dates don't match up and again this wasn't the and this is after French 1500 one. and if you've been paying attention 1500 don't don't count it <laughs> right but to be fair they're saying this might have precursored this you know true might have been, there might have been another dancing plague but anyways basically out of nowhere people started dancing it couldn't stop and then other people who witnessed the dancing began dancing and they couldn't stop. And people literally danced into exhaustion and some died. It's kind of gnarly. Isn't it's it? crazy. It's absolutely I insane. haven't done any research into it, but what the heck causes that? Insanity. No one knows. But we will cover that in a future episode. If I ever, just, so if I just ever see you dancing, I'll know to take you to a doctor immediately. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't dance. So, so you, you dance at that dollar dance. I, I, dude, I hated dancing. I hated it so much. I <laughs> was uncomfortable the entire time. But So yeah, so those are the... Three good theories and two, yeah, I don't think they, you know, I don't think the other two were it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, those are those are the theories. So, like I said, I tend to believe that it was just people moving away. You know, that Could would have be. been quite a hit no. to a community at that year, in, in that year. And it might have been worth writing about. So, plus, if you actually ha- are holding town records, you're going to keep try to keep track of People coming and going. Wait, so in that theory, I forget, <clears throat> was there an actual Piper? Uh, it depends. So so in the theory, maybe the Piper was like, hey, I bring a message from Lord of yeah. this town, like blah, blah, blah. Yeah, which would make sense back then. Mm-hmm. That was a thing. Like it actually, that stuff did happen. Like, yeah. you know, it might not have been that, but Pipers were all, always given odd jobs. And maybe a Lord just approached one. I was like, hey, I'm trying to build up this town. I'll give you some money if you go give people my word, you know, tell them what I'm willing to give them. And mm-hmm. Have them follow you. Maybe. Who knows? <clears throat> let's get to... Let's, let's wrap this baby up, shall we? Yes, sir. Even though most academics believe we have finally solved the history of the Pied Piper, uh, there are still some things that are truly a mystery. Chief among these is the hyperfixation on the date of June 26, 1284. Sure, a mass immigration could have occurred and likely did, but it's extremely unlikely that all of those people left on the exact date. If that were the case, you would think there would have been a widely popular story of township doubling in size in Transylvania, right? Furthermore, where did the widely popular edition of the rats come into play? While, yes, most people believe that adding rats to the story was simply an attempt to make the story more relevant, you know, the bubonic plague happening in the background, this still doesn't explain how it became so ingrained within this fairy tale. After all, as mentioned before, what makes a fairy tale a fairy tale is those core components that never change. It is possible that maybe there is another story within this story, and somehow the two got mixed into one. So maybe the mystery of the Pied Piper of Hamlin isn't solved, or maybe it is. Either way, we'll leave that decision up to you, and let you decide. No matter what you believe, though, I'm sure we can all agree on one last thing. Something catastrophic happened to the community of Hamlin on June, 12, June 26, 1284, and it was big enough for a group most of mostly illiterate individuals to write about it. Man, you really just zinged everyone. <laughs> just like, we couldn't end on a nice note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, so I talked about... I mean, you could have just said a group of individuals, but you had to be like, nah, these illiterate fucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying... They were illiterate and they made Germany. I just want you to know, I'm sorry if any German comes across this video. I, I love you guys, right? You guys are awesome. I love your beer. You guys are cool. Great at soccer. Uh, I got no qualms with you. I drove a Volkswagen, loved it. I don't know what this guy's problem. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a Volkswagen. That's my car. Technically, it was made in Mexico, but it's it's Volkswagen. See, I'm I'm Mexican. So what's up, Germany? Let's hang out. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> One of Volkswagen's biggest plants is actually in Mexico. That's where your car was built, too. The Tiguan, when you had it. How dare you? How dare, How dare what? you say my, my German-made car is... Never mind. <laughs> Jeez, dude, let's wrap this up, dude. Come on. Yeah, we need to. <laughs> we, need <laughs> we need to wrap it up. We need to, we need to stop this, dude. Oh, my God. I, I need sleep. <laughs> it's true, dude. I get angry. <laughs> so I, I get... Heard, I get... Just, <laughs> I just harass people. Yeah, and... you're definitely a harasser, dude. <laughs> yeah. You're definitely a harasser. Oh, God. Oh, all right. So Plug it away, baby. All righty. So, guys, thank you for joining us today <sighs> on this podcast. I really hope you had fun, and I hope you will join us again despite everything you've heard today. <laughs> so, with that, if you do want to check us out on YouTube, if you already aren't, um, you can find us on YouTube at you go first pod. You can also find us on Spotify, Amazon music, Apple podcasts, basically wherever you get your podcasts. We're over there. We should be at least. Um, and if, if not, want... let us know so I can yell at Austin. Yes, actually let us know. Complain. Be like, yo, why am... can I hear you? Why are you not on this? Um, if you want to ask us a question or just tell us how, horrible of a job we're doing or how great we're doing mm-hmm. or you have a suggestion you can email us at you go first dot tv at gmail.com and additionally if you like some video games especially like spooky video games we have a pretty lively channel it's a visit us at, on our primary channel yes we actually have some subscribers in that channel and we actually uh we post this is like a weekly thing You'll see some shorts, yes, but we post our main videos once a week, every Wednesday, as you might know already. Um, but we post a lot more frequently over there. So if you're into watching spooky games, and those are much more scary than the podcast, I think, um, you can check us out at You Go First Gaming. And I think that's really all I got for you guys. Mm-hmm. You got any uh, final thoughts, Fernando? Uh no, I think you pretty much covered it up, and thank you for <laughs> thank you for putting me out of my misery. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. All right, well, there you go, Stan Pied Piper. Yep. Let us know uh, what you thought. Thank yeah. you. Uh, next episode is going to be the uh, Wee Wee House. Wait, Ooh. no, not Wee Wee House. Uh, it's not the Wee Wee House. What is it? Well, you just Shit. lied to everybody, so it must, just might lie. as well be the Wee Wee House. <laughs> No, it's not the Wee House. What's the one in Kansas? Oh, the Sally House. The Sally House. Ooh. Next one's gonna be the Sally House. Oh man, this one gave me goosebumps when I first ever heard of it, dude. I, I actually didn't want to, didn't want to ever remember it, but it's forever ingrained in my mind. I can't wait to talk about this. I hate you. All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again, and hope you have a great night. Yep. Remember to stay spooky, everybody. Yep. Everyone, uh, have a good night. Bye. Toodles. Bye. Bye. <laughs>